Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Sean. Sean, you are here to share with us a personal project you've been working on. Yes. Uh, alongside another replica prop maker. This, a replica prop inspired by one of our favorite recent films. Mm -hmm. Blade Runner 2049. And our friend Ken Chung has made the memory bearings or memory oh, orbs. This is so cool. This is when Kay goes to uh, look up the old memory data banks pre the blackout. Yeah. And this is something just from that new film. Yeah. Was it from the original film? Mm -mm. And it, they have these little uh, squiggles in it. And so Ken's been selling these on his Etsy store. And the thing is, it comes with a nice little glass uh, display, but these really pop and re really come to life when you light them. Oh, how, how do you get these made? They're, they're lasered. So rather than not your typical laser cutter, but a laser that can focus at varying depths within, mm -hmm. and they just use a random pattern so that each one is different just like the ones in the film. So it's like those collectibles where you could, in crystal, have like a sculpture yeah. with, with these dots. Yeah, and uh, and so each one that you get from Ken is different, and they're just really, really cool. It's, like, so cool. it's like the perfect little hand prop to like put on your desk. Yeah. Um, so he, I, I got a few from him and I love them, but like it just, they just come alive so much when you light them. I was like, I need to make a little display for this. Yes. So, so you turn, you could have turned to a couple <laughs> different processes and you use laser cutting. Yes. So we made, what I did is I looked at the film and this is inspired by the actual reader that love puts the bearings in and it kind of sinks down in the machine to actually mm -hmm. like read the memories. It looks like there's like a heat sink or something mm -hmm. underneath. It does recess into the, yeah. the table. And so it, uh, so I kind of, I went on that to get a little look. So this is actually my very first fully laser cut project. We no 3D printing. No, and there, initially that's how I started. I was gonna make the base that way. But the more I thought about it, the more uh, I thought that the laser cutter cutting would lend itself well, like to be able to light up the fins like this. And it just made more sense to completely laser cut it. And that's what I did and it worked out. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. And we used some real hardware to uh, combine with the laser cutting stuff. Um, and what I did was I, I laid it out completely in 3D as a 3D model. Okay. Um, so I could figure out how it was going to look when it's stacked together, and of course, the thing that we've already you know talked about many times before is using real world material thicknesses. So I use like one eighth, one sixteenth common acrylic sizes, mm -hmm. and um, so I built it as a three D model. I figured out that I could use these little metal dowel pins to hold it all together, and then once the three D model was built, I I took away the thickness and used the vectors and the splines that I yes. used to export for the 3D laser cutting. Um, and I was able to do some fun stuff like etching and engraving on the bottom as well, but we can look at the uh, all the pieces and see how it all kind of works. Yeah, so we already did some of the laser cutting and these are all mm -hmm. the pieces. Um, it's a combination of these in between stacks yep. of these. And we're using about uh, four different materials and three different thicknesses. Is that something as you're designing in uh, Cinema 4D, um, in 3D, not mm -hmm. just in the vectors and splines, you can assign properties and say, you know this is gonna be a clear acrylic, you know this is gonna be opaque black, or was that just in your head? What, uh, so what I'll sometimes do is since you're working in a 3D program, I'll like assign render colors to it. Mm. So uh, just in its simple form in the viewport, it'll just be like white, black, et cetera, so I can differentiate between the clear and the black parts. Which gives you a general sense of how mm -hmm. to look, but you don't know how to look with the light until yeah. you actually laser no. cut it out. And that, there was a few iterations. The first version was all black. Mm -hmm. And I just was messing around and I realized that the uh, happy accident, the side lighting, the clear acrylic would look really cool. So I changed the bottom half to the clear. And um, the other thing that I, I, I find that I do is uh, sometimes you, you introduce a new thickness material and you're like, does it need, do I need that third material? Because right. that means another sheet that you have to buy, another sheet that you have to set up for laser cutting. So there are some things that I changed so that it was the same thickness as other pieces and maybe you glued certain pieces together and stuff like that mm -hmm. to simplify the amount of cutting I had to do. This is looks deceptively simple. It looks just like it, five sheets stacked yeah. on top, but they float and if you look at the individual sheets, no two are really alike. Mm -hmm. And one of the, uh, there, there are some duplicates internally, um, but there are some special pieces that we'll look at. 
So if I take the bearing off, there's a few things that I did here. In the movie, the actual light starts out as orange, and then once it sinks into the machine, it turns blue. Mm -hmm. So I did another thing where I, I laser cut this orange disc so that if you wanted to be more faithful to how <laughs> it starts out, you can drop that in and turn it orange. And nice. then it kind of gives you an interesting blue-orange uh, contrast between the two. And then the bottom is magnets, and it just pops ah. off. And I got a standard micro USB. And my favorite Adafruit industry supplied these really cool little sequin lights mm -hmm. and the USB interface board. So the electronics are really simple. And everything folds compact. And, and of mm -hmm. course, you have your channels for your wires. You actually have this bridge here for mm -hmm. mounting the lights with markings on the panel yeah, for where so the lights mount. Let's take a look at some of these. So this is the bottom panel. And I did keep in mind, like, do I want to, you know, I. You know, do I want to sell these? Do I want to give any away? Do I want to have to build them for everybody? Right. So I was kind of thinking about this in kit form. And one of the things that I was able to do is I was able to do etching. I got my, you know, my logo on there. But the other thing I did is I even etched like where you put the rubber feet. Ah. So I got little etch circles that show you where to put them. Little guides, and perfect. Then, and then the, the feet, since they're already... Uh, adhesive are going to act to hold magnets in. Yeah. So we drop that in and we just kind of press it down into place. And we have the magnets to hold it together. And then <clears throat> we're just going to start from the very, you know, you can start from the top and bottom. We'll start from the top. So I already glued the, the top together. And that's basically uh, two pieces. It's a uh, clear ring uh, with a round bottom that's glued onto it. So mm -hmm. in this case, I just use super glue, which is not the best thing to use for acrylic because it can haze, mm. but anything that might haze is gonna be hidden anyway, so I wasn't too worried about Maybe it. Maybe use acrylic case. cement or something. Yeah, yeah, acrylic cement would probably be the better way to go. I just didn't have any on hand at the time. So uh, I picked up these, um, these alloy steel dowel pins. I wanted to use stainless steel because I wanted to make because they're nice and shiny. They have a really nice finish and they uh, wouldn't rust. Mm -hmm. um, the interesting thing is m most stainless steel is only mildly magnetic, so it wouldn't stick to my bottom magnets. So yeah. these are an alloy steel. Um, but basically, I, ju I just start with two pins, put them in the hole there, and then we gotta start with um, one of our standard spacers, and it just drops on the pins. Uh, then we have one of our blank clear fins that we're going to drop on as well. And what you could do is you could actually be gluing these together as you go. Another spacer. Another blank fin. So these fins are identical, so I just have to duplicate them in the program. These spacers are identical so far, so I just had to duplicate them. <coughs> and then we do come to our special one. So this one, I etched little panels uh, to show where the lights go. Yeah. So you just stick them on with double-sided tape. And then this is a little outlet for the USB cable. So I just was able, uh, that will just then has one light that shines in the middle and then one edge lights it so that the whole ring lights up. Nice. And then our next spacer, we also did a custom cut so it has a hole for the USB cable as well, right? And then once you're done with that, you can put in the other dowel pins. And then once again, these will be glued in place and they wanna be flush, so we're gonna pop them out so they stick up a little bit. Oops, so we don't have it glued together yet. And then when you have all your magnets in, this simply snaps on there and you're good to go. Yes. And then the nice thing is, is as you cut this, this is actually cut out from this anyway. Yeah. And we just cut an additional circle to uh, hold the orb and you drop that in place and there you go. Perfect little display. For... Yeah, I'm really pleased with how yeah. this turned out. And and for my first fully laser cut thing, I think I got the bug now. <laughs> so. I can see using this a lot more in, in kind of like our previous videos, combining with 3D printing as well. And also maybe in the future, having the pieces interlock mm -hmm. as well. Yep. One extra level. It, it, I'm working my way up, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Uh, Ken has some of these memory orbs yeah. on his Etsy store. We'll have a link below mm -hmm. if you can check that out. But we're learning how to design. You're learning how to put things together, not just 3D printing, not just laser cutting different things combined, yeah. and hope you guys enjoy that. It's a fun little project that Sean did and sharing, and uh, we'll have more stuff in the future on Tested. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.